What about uh, your parents are Russian? Your grandparents are Russian. Great grandparents. Don't worry, I'm not KGB. I don't turn blue in. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Okay. Wrong, 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 wrong. Don't worry, I tell you why. My name is Boris Elevich Kievsky. I was born in the Ukrainian Socialist Republic. This is coming of birth certificate for all of you uh, Obama haters, whatever you are. Uh, this is me as a small baby in Ukraine where you grew and this is me as a uh, hey, handsome, handsome boy. Chicago. Oh, right, so uh, my grandfather was Bolshevik revolutionary. His great -grand my great grandfather was in Tsar's army. He actually came back from Haifa to fight in World War I for the Tsar. We were there for hundreds of years before it was even Russia. Some of you know about this, right? So, then eventually, of course, I come to Hollywood. Where else can I go? <laughs> With my great English language and slight Russian accent, I play a variety of roles, all of them Russian.
Now, the Soviets recognize that this might be an issue as well, and in 1934, Stalin authorizes the Jewish Autonomous Region to be created so that the Jews of the Soviet Union can receive a territory in which to pursue Yiddish cultural heritage within a socialist framework like all good Soviets. The territory they allocate to us is Birbhajan. Now, here we have Kiev, St. Petersburg, Moscow, all very active centers of Jewish life and Jewish culture. Uh, I guess it will be somewhere right around here. So, let's see, Birbhajan must be around here somewhere. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Let's see. Oh, there it is. On the exact opposite side of Russia, as far as they could get us away, seven time zones to be precise. The worst tundra of the entire empire. Some actually prefer being in Siberia to being in Birbhajan. As my friend Gal Beckerman, who I interviewed for my documentary, likes to say, we wouldn't know a piece of monster from a piece of hollow. Yet every time we applied for a job, an apartment, even a library card, there it was, our nationality, Jewish. So what's a Jew to do? Situation is kind of tough. There's really not much they could do. They try to get out, most of them can, but really, where would they go? Well, everything changes in 1967 with the Six Day War. Now, most of you here know what happened there. The Soviet-backed militaries of Egypt, Jordan, and Syria are defeated by this tiny Jewish nation against all Soviet propaganda and predictions. What does this do? It instills great pride in the Jewish, Soviet Jewish population of the time. Now, suddenly, we are not the downtrodden, beaten-up Jews of the Tsarist Empire or of Hitler's Nazis. We are a people capable of defending ourselves, performing, and maintaining our own nation. Jews therefore begin to apply en masse to leave the USSR to be reunited with family under the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which my father is very proud to point out was signed on the day he was born, including by the Soviet Union. The movement to free Soviet Jewry takes hold. Poster child Anatoly Sharansky spends many, many years in the gulags for his participation and efforts to help get us out. In the US, Jews start to organize, rally, and lobby. Slowly, Jews are allowed out. This is my own exit visa from the former Soviet Union. They gave us a whole 10 days from July 10th to 20th to get the hell out. Officially, <laughs> we were all going to Israel. Once Jews are allowed out, however, everyone else wants their freedom too. There are many oppressed nationalities within the Soviet Union, and frankly, even the non-oppressed, non-minorities non want to get out as well. This forces the Soviet Union to deal with the deep dissatisfaction of its own citizens. And what happens? This helps lead to the collapse of the Soviet Union. There's our pal Misha Gorbachev. The good news, the Jewish nationality is no longer mandatory, it is now optional. Remaining Jews are allowed to immigrate. Most of us again come to the United States or Israel, many go to Germany, etc. The bad news, guess who's to blame for the collapse of the great Soviet Empire? <laughs> Us again. So, with the Soviet Empire collapsing, there are now a bunch of smaller countries. Some of them existed before, some of them actually didn't before the Soviet Union. They need someone to look up to, they need heroes again. So, what do they do? Well, Russia rehabilitates Stalin. So what if he tried to exterminate the Jews, literally, talk about genocide, and so what if he is responsible for the deaths of approximately 30 million people? He was a great leader, let's all look up to him. In Ukraine, we have Bogdan Khmelnytsky here, appearing on the 5 Kryvnia, the official currency of the Ukraine note. He is responsible for the deaths of 20,000 to 100,000 different Jews when trying to liberate the Ukraine. He is actually the first one that I know of to actually uh, attempt a genocide of the Jewish people. In Russia, we also have new organizations like Russia for Russians, with slogans such as, we are Russian, God's with us. And uh, my favorite poster here, I'll give the Russian readers a, a quick second to read it. It's a little hard to translate, but essentially it says, uh, screw the kites, Russia's for Russians. <laughs> but Boris, they're just ignorant bigots. Why would we want to listen to them much less? Subscribe, subscribe to their philosophy. Well, it's true, they are ignorant bigots, but they have a point. You see, Russian is the nationality of the Russian Rus people. They have a common origin, a common tradition, common culture, common language. Not only that, but Russian is actually a religion. Here is St. Basil's Cathedral, located in Red Square. That's my own photo from when I was there. Yesterday, it celebrated its 450th birthday, that very cathedral right there. The Russian religion was organized specifically, intentionally, by Vladimir I to unite all the Russian principalities and all the Rus people under one god, indivisible, with not much liberty and no justice for anyone. <laughs> Nonetheless, in, since 1400, it has been the official religion of the region. Same is true for Ukrainian. There is an Orthodox Ukrainian church in Kiev. Almost the same exact religion, just translated into another language. So, what is our nationality? If we're not Russian, if we're not Soviet, what does that leave us? And some of you might be getting to the point here ahead of me, but what are some of the elements of nationality? Well, there's language. We used to have Yiddish and some Hebrew. The Soviets pretty much wiped that out. We have our own history, our own culture, our own education systems, traditions, and of course, religions. 
all nearly annihilated by the Soviets. Sovietization disconnected the Jewish people so much that from its own roots and from Western Jewry, like those of you that grew up in America, that without these connections, we have little left binding us to other Jewish peoples around the world. Jews, therefore, self-identifying or letting themselves be identified as I just did you, as Russian, denies the hundreds of years of discrimination, living under anti-Semitic oppression and what I like to call the Rusholm syndrome. So what do we have left? Well, we do actually have a common language. Yiddish was pretty much taken away from us. No one since my grandparents' generation really speaks Yiddish anymore. But guess what we do have? We have Russian. Whether we were born in Moscow, or Kiev, or Lithuania, or Tashkent, we all speak Russian today. Even if we live in the United States, where we now speak English, Israel, where we speak Hebrew, Germany, where we speak German, we're still united by that. We have a shared history. Throughout the ages, whether it be under the Polish Empire, under the Prussian Empire before that, under the Russian Empire or the Soviet Empire, we have survived, we have maintained our own history in many different ways, from the Baal Shem Tov, through Trotsky, through Sharonsky, and today. We have a hybrid culture. Again, the Jewish culture is mostly wiped out, but a lot of it is held underground by our own grandparents and passed down to us, and it's integrated with the Soviet culture, in which the Jews play a huge role. Nearly 50% of the writers in the Moscow Writers Guild are Jews. The composers, many are Jewish. The filmmakers are Jewish. It's a proud culture that the Soviet Union actually does manage to create, and we are a big part of it. We have still Jewish values. Religion is gone, but we still have a huge value on family, on education, and many of the traditional staples of Jewish life. And lastly, we have pride. We survived. We not only survived all the oppression and attempted exterminations, but we thrived. Many of us thrived individually. As a whole community, we wound up surviving. We wound up taking down the Russian Empire, taking down the Soviet Union, and we moved past it. We went to Israel, where we are a huge part of what is now the startup nation. We came to America, where we created huge thriving communities with huge capitalistic ideals. We have so much common history and so much shared, shared experience that we can actually be proud of, that this cannot be discounted or taken too lightly. And what does that all add up to? As you might well guess, in my opinion, it's a new Jewish nationality. The Russians might have labeled us with it, but today we own it. It is ours, it is who we are today. We are the nationality of Trotsky, Aleichem, Chagall, and Jabotinsky, of Sharonsky, Brin, Kunis, and Piyowski. <laughs>